This is Bro Average, and you're watching another week of I See YouTube. Let's go. Well, hey guys, welcome back to another devotional on IC Youth. Uh, we have just really been enjoying just digging in the Word and doing this new kind of style. And so we're actually going to start a whole new series. We're going to be talking about the Sermon on the Mount. And it sounds weird sometimes. You probably have heard of that or maybe you've never heard of that. But the Sermon on the Mount is literally Jesus giving a sermon on a mountain. That's why it's Sermon on the Mount. And so what he did is he brought all these people, these crowds gathered and his disciples were around him and he was on the sermon. He was on a mountain and he just started preaching. And so we're going to go to the very beginning, Matthew chapter five. He does what we call the Beatitudes. And so this is something you might have heard or might not have heard. It's where um, Jesus said, blessed are those who, and then fills in the blank. And he does it over and over again. And so we're going to kind of dive into that and kind of dive into those different sections starting next week. But I think this week would be really important for us. And maybe, Mark, you can help us define the word blessing. Because we hear like, you know, we see hashtag blessed on Instagram or uh, blessed by the best or just different things Too like blessed that. To be stressed. Too blessed to be stressed. So, Mark, what does blessed mean? Yeah. Uh, so that word, um, before we get to that word, there's an overarching concept over the book of Matthew. Um, so right away in the beginning of his gospel, before he even gets to the genealogy, he talks about the kingdom of God. That's going to be a major theme all throughout the 28th. Uh, chapters of the book of Matthew. And so that word blessing falls within that context. Um, the kingdom of God and this idea of blessing, we see it here in the New Testament, Matthew being the first book of the New Testament. It's an Old Testament word. I mean, we just got out of the book of Genesis um, with Joseph. Joseph was living out and, and experiencing the promise of God's blessing. And you go back into the book of Genesis, and that word blessing is huge in there. We use it to say in the Psalms that we bless God. And in this case, it's saying about a blessing on to us. And so... Um, you can translate that word a lot of different ways. Um, so if you want to look at in the one that we're going to, you know, kind of be looking at today into next week uh, where it says, um, uh, blessed are the poor in spirit, uh, for they will receive the kingdom of heaven. And it goes down the list, like you said, blessed are, blessed are, blessed are. You could read the first, you know, eight verses of the Sermon on the Mount by saying happy are those. Um, but now, again, that word is, is different than we use it today. We, you know, we have the pursuit of happiness and, and, and we just want to be happy. But again, if we don't know what that means, well, then it, the word's going to go undefined. And so uh, maybe it would be better to read congratulations. Um, uh, it will go well for you. And so if we're just going to look at the first beatitude, you know, you could translate it and say, um, you know, congratulations to the poor in spirit. And then on down the list, as you as you read, um, you could you could say it that way. So congratulations. Um, you, you, you're doing great. You're right where you need to be. And this whole idea of blessing gets into this into this whole overarching theme of scripture that talks about a path. We saw it with Joseph. He was on that path to do right. Um, he was on a path to follow God, to be a part of his plan. And, and that's what this word is as well. So I, I think that, like, I love that you said kind of like congratulations or, you know, you did it because I feel like the word blessed when we read it by itself it tends to be like, okay, this person's blessed, this person's not. Correct. This yeah. person's, you know, good, this person's not. Whereas this is more like, congratulations, you did it. Like you worked at that. Yes. And so um, I think that is incredible. And could you kind of, Mark, explain a little bit more about being um, poor in spirit? Congratulations, poor in spirit. What, is, what does that mean? Yeah, yeah. Let me just say one more thing about that word blessed too that uh, what you said kind of jogged my memory on it. 
A lot of times people read the Beatitudes as if it were like a job description. Um, as if, you know, like, hey, God's hiring some faithful followers. Here are the qualifications. If you don't have these, you need not apply. And um, I've heard people say, oh, I'm just not church material. I couldn't darken the doorway of a church. And even sometimes they'll use these passages as the, um, you know, I, I, I don't fit these things. Um, and that it could not be any further from the truth. And so this is a path that God is going to take you on. And so to be walking on this path, you're going to be poor in spirit. And so um, think of poor in spirit as this idea of um, you, you, you are lacking something and, and you're coming with a need. And so... Um, for some of us, this kind of this this trips us up a little bit because um, you know we might be thinking social economical poverty, but that's not what this passage is talking about. This passage is talking about having a need for deliverance. And again, I mean, this goes all the way back to the beginning. the The book of Genesis ends with God's people being, you know, Joseph is second in command, and then. Uh, Exodus 1.8 says there came to be a new Pharaoh, a new king of Egypt who did not care about Joseph and all he had done for Egypt. And then boom, right into brutal slavery. And all throughout scripture, God's people, they're kind of, uh, to quote, need to breathe. They're the outsiders. They're the people who are, are, are on this, this alternative path over here. Uh, it, it's, it taps into this idea of what Jesus says when he's teaching and he says um, there's a road to destruction, a big wide road, and then there's a narrow road to the kingdom. And so the poor in spirit is just somebody who's open, somebody who is, who is coming before God and saying, if I don't have you, I don't have what I need. It's about being porous, uh, open to the things of God open you're, you're crying out for his deliverance i mean if we had more time we could walk for an hour just talking about this idea of crying out and looking to be in need for god i i think that's huge because once we realize that we're in need of a savior because we all are once we're in realizing realization of that need that affects everything we do that affects the way we look at life um that just affects all those things so that is such a good Thing to be reminded of. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Congratulations, those who realize their need for God. You're right and where so, you, you're right where you need to be. If you feel insufficient, if you feel like you oh, need that's something, perfect. You're that, that's how you could write this verse out. You are right where you need to be. Congratulations. It it doesn't seem right, but that's exactly what God is saying here. I love that. Well, Mark, why don't you tell us a little bit about where we're going to be going the next few weeks, and then why don't you close this out? Yeah. So we're just going to be, this is, this is a, a path that God is laying out. And so the Sermon on the Mount, he goes through all of these ways in which you're blessed. And, and like we talked about, of congratulations when you feel this way. These are, these are uh, checkpoints. Um, I remember an arcade game, Cruisin' World or Cruisin' USA. I used to play it all the time in the arcades as a kid. Uh, and you, you, you'd be in the race, and if you, if you hit the checkpoint, you got to go on in the game more. If you didn't get the checkpoint, it was game over, and you had to put more quarters in. These are checkpoints for you going, yes, I am on the right path. And then the rest of the Sermon on the Mount, God's going to lay, or Jesus is going to lay out this journey of uh, walking through all these different parts of your life, anger, lust, your money, prayer, all of these things that we interact with, he's going to say, and here's what the journey is going to look like. And so I am very, very, very excited uh, to be going in on this. And I'm hoping that you guys listening at home, um, as we talk about this path, it's going to be rough rides. I mean, you're going to see the things on your list going, if this was a job description, I don't want the job. But the adventure of faith and the adventure that this path is going to be, that's an adventure worth taking. And so please uh, come in, tune in on Sunday evenings uh, to be a part of this great adventure. So with that, let's pray it out. All right. God, we, um, 
metaphorically and literally, we lift our hands. And by doing so, we reach out to you. Um, we are taking an open posture towards you. Um, and so for those of us who feel very needy, I, I, I pray that we feel the smile of you that says you're right where you need to be. Um, for those of us who, who don't like feeling needy, um, then I, I pray that this message would go from the head to the heart and that all of us would come before you with open arms and find that beautiful truth that your arms are open, ready to take us in and walk with us. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. Thanks for joining us. Let's give it a whirl.